Hello and welcome to my stables. I am the Draco Bookkeeper and welcome back to Echoes of the Past. Last session, the party finally went to the funeral and boy was it a shit show. Everything hit the fan very quickly and I granted my players the ability to sit down and strategize what they were going to do so they didn't double up and they could plan with each other. It all went swimmingly well, except with the Mora, who, in the end, could not stay in control and got basically taken over by Corellin. Everyone basically did not approve of this, and the goddess was pretty much at her wit's end for the audacity of Sage and Kirish not only threatening to kill the Pantheon, but also just the general disrespect. Yes, Bert and Rhea were not happy about the taking over, but they were at least respectful when talking to her, but Kiris and Sage at this point don't give a shit. So now, everyone had gone back to the house and... For a little bit, everyone, everyone except for Kirish and Amora, has gone to sleep. Kirish is staring blankly at the wall, and Amora is staring at the table, which she closes her eyes. And when she opens them again, there is a visitor in her house. One that she is familiar with, but not too happy that she's there. I'm not even safe alone in my thoughts anymore, am I? <clears throat> well, I mean, it could be worse. You could be dead. I'd rather be dead than have another soul live within my body. This is meant for me, not you. Well, like I told your friends, the I could leave you and find a new body, but you would die. Your injuries have progressed and you would just straight up die from them, or die within the next couple of hours. Trust me, if there would be a way to magically heal them, I would. So Kirish is right. You're just... tired people that have stronger magic. You guys aren't gods. Corellin stands up and goes to strike Amora, but almost with psychic powers, it gets an inch from Amora's face and Corellin just stops. <clears throat> what is this? You're in my head space. This is my area to think. And what I say goes. I don't want you to hit me, so you're not going to. Now sit your ass back down. And as soon as Amora says this, Corellin is flung backward into the chair. Now we're gonna have a little chat. We're gonna set up some boundaries. Because if you pull that shit again like you did out there, and make me look like a weakened babe in front of my friends again, I will forcefully remove myself from this plane of existence. Yes, in the end that would mean me being dead, but you would be screwed out of a body as well. That's not very knight-like of you. Do you think I care? I can barely lift my sword right now. It's only through tremendous willpower for my sword arm not to shake. Am I putting on a front? Yes. 
Bitch, I can't have my friends think I'm a total weakling that doesn't know how- doesn't know the sharp edge of a sword. So, first off, you only come present when I deem it so. And that's if any other option is weighed out. And if you do come out, you have to do something godlike. And not something that any basic mage or warrior can do. No, and you have to basically prove your status because to me you're just... You're just an elven form of sage. You think... Well, sage doesn't... No, sage does. You think that you're better than everybody. Why? Because you're a god? Oh, the elves have suffered so much. Do something about it. Apparently you have rules, but clearly the rules aren't being followed. What god do you know gets summoned from the heavens upon the whim of his son? I wish my parents were like that. So, you need to prove your worth, just like anybody else. You need to prove to us that you do deserve your godhood. Just like I had to prove my knighthood to Kirish. Corellan just sits back and glowers. Well, if I had my chance, I'd be able to. I didn't want you to. Just because there was the first sign of danger doesn't mean that that automatically gives you access to do what you please. Not everything needs divine intervention. Us little people have been looking out for ourselves for aeons. Honestly, I don't even know why half the people worship they do. Probably just so they can get their spells or whatever. It's disgusting. Honestly, I can see why some of the clerics turned, well, rogue. They pray to a god they don't believe in, they think is a joke, and they get their spells without any repercussions. Do you see the ill logic here? Corellin falls silent. You may have a point. I don't... There is no may. I do have a point. Now, speaking of points, the next time you come out, you're going to admit to the party that that fear that Rhea saw wasn't mine, and you very well know it. So don't push something off you feel as mine. Oh, I just wasn't expecting you to put up such a high resolve. Like I said, you were fine the other two times. Because I knew I was outnumbered. The first time... I was getting overrun. I was covered in the enemy. And the second time, well, you... I don't really consider it being possessed, because, well, that's kind of when you absorbed into my body and pushed Grog away. I think that was just kind of a fusion of bodies. Well, I was in the middle of casting a spell, because I did see him. Well, either way, I don't count that. I can make your existence here as pleasant or painful as I wish it to be. Just remember that.
Well... Will I know? Oh yes, you will know. Because I will come to you and tell you it is time to switch. This is what you need to do. And if you don't follow exactly what I say, you will be evicted. And yes, I know I will die. But you know what? I'd rather die free than this. Corellin just looks taken aback. Uh, all right. Now, the other set of boundaries. I'm not sure how this works, but if you look, are you, do you change the whole appearance? Well, I was doing it more for a glamorous effect. Right, so if you keep my appearance, anything that I have told you, anything memory or emotion-wise that we have shared with each other, stays here. Am I clear? So what, you just don't want your thoughts and emotions being talked about while you can't control your mouth? Yes, exactly. Because if I can't trust you to keep my inner thoughts and my inner feelings where they should be, how am I to trust that you're going to listen to the orders I give? I am a goddess. You don't give orders to me. And Amora slams her hands upon the table. You are in my body. You are in my headspace. I am the dominant soul here. For this is mine. You are an, an intruder. So yes, you will listen to me. And the angrier Amora gets, the stronger the fire blazes in the fireplace. Out of everybody you could have visited, you visited a non-mage. Why not go possess Sage and figure out her possession issues? Well, honestly, that was kind of a prime opportunity. And also, it's what happened when we were, well, stabbed together. So you mean to tell me, if I didn't protect you, you'd be fine? You just walk off? I yes. With the sword going through both of us, our blood mixed. And... She falls silent. I thought gods were immune to everything. We can only do so much. We also have our limits. So you're not gods. Gods should have no limits. They shouldn't have boundaries. The weaker the god is, yes, we do have boundaries. How are you guys weak? You have a whole entire city full of frogs! Dedicating their lives to you. How are you guys weak? Well, we were weakened for the fact that Mithrun's castle and activities were masked. But some of us have more followers than others. So we're able to do more. So it's a popularity contest. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is... I can't believe this. I actually can't believe what I'm hearing right now. A popular... You know what? Okay. 
And she sits down, and out of thin air, a book and a stick of graphite appear. What are you doing? I am just passing the time. Until it's time to wake up. But this isn't going to be in the waking world. Oh, I know. I actually have a different drawing I want to do in the waking world. Corella peers over. Oh. It's of your boy crush, Kirish, and the book snaps closed and disappears. If you do anything to hurt him, then I will most definitely evict you. Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Amora's face goes deadpan, and her eyes dangerously narrow. I don't trust that sarcasm. I don't know you well enough to joke around like this. If it was Rhea or anybody else, I would laugh, but I'm going to take that seriously. You fuck with Kirish, and you will be evicted. Oh, honey, everyone knows how you feel. I don't care. If everyone else knows. There's too much going on right now for to discuss what the two of us are. That can wait until a, a calmer time has come. Oh, but those sweet words he said to you. To me. To me. Not to anyone else. Oh, relax, Amora. You really need to pull that stick out of your ass. And you need to pull your soul out of my body. Sorry, we clear of the boundaries and the consequences. I can't believe I'm getting ordered around by one of my own children. I could understand you calling me your child if I was actually biologically yours or if you took care of me like a child, but the Illumines and Misa actually treated me more of like a child than you ever have. And then Bob back in Mir. Where were you in Misa? Where were you in Ilya? And where were you in Mir? Hmm? Oh, the dark forces were there. We couldn't do anything. That's a crock of bullshit. You didn't want to put yourselves in danger for selfish reasons. You knew that you could die? Is that it? There was rumors here and there that this dark one was trying to hunt us down, so we did try to stay out of Stay out of the way. Oh. So you're cowards too. Usually a god takes whatever chance they can get. And. Flaunt their powers. Right. So when you do come out next time. Not only do you have to do something godlike. But you're going to apologize to Rhea. Apologize for what? Apologize for sitting by while her beloved home got destroyed. To where her sister disappeared. Basically, you're going to apologize for all the things you stood by and watched which you could have stopped. And you didn't. And you're going to do it with your face in the dirt. Prostrating yourself. And she will decide what to do with you then. But if she wants to kill me, then she kills us. 
Kirish will understand. Because right now you are a threat, you are a liability, and I cannot stand by while you decide to run rampant and do whatever the hell you think you can. Physically, I might be weak. But mentally and emotionally, I am strong within. And I still hold my code very dearly to me. If you're a threat, you will be dealt with. Whether I live or die. Krellen just sits back, wide-eyed. If you want to take that risk, fine. I'll do it. Whenever I take over next, and after the danger's clear and everything's resolved, I'll go prostrate myself before Rhea. You better. Because if you don't, and we switch back, the next time I meditate, you get to deal with me. Krellen looks a little bit scared. Well, what are you gonna do? Oh, I have plenty of time to think. And I've been through a lot. I've experienced firsthand what needs to happen. You won't enjoy your stay here, so I suggest you try and find a new body as fast as possible. And I have a very strong feeling that Gondra will be able to pull together and bring me back. Just me. She smiles sweetly as the fire begins to dim. Hey, you need to put more wood on that fire. It's starting to get cold. Oh, no. I hear people moving about. And... I'm still sitting at the table. Honestly, I think right now I'm going to actually draw something. In the real world. Remember our deal, Corellin. You don't want to disappoint me. And the scene fades to black. Amora, as she gets up from the kitchen table and goes into the study. Kirishu, in the time that has passed, have you gone to sleep or are you still staring at the wall? Yeah, no, he's probably still sitting. Do you, rea do you react to Amora walking into the study? Um, <clears throat> just barely. He, he probably would have just, like, I don't know, kind of flinched in her direction. It, it's the only way I can describe it. Okay. Not like, he doesn't, like, fully look at her. He just acknowledges their existence. It acknowledges the existence that someone walked in the room. He doesn't gotcha. even necessarily know it's her. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. So she walks by you, and Bert, you are just about getting ready to sleep. And you see Amora walk in, and she walks toward the bookshelf. Do you try to go back to sleep, or do you watch what she does? He gets my full-on curiosity. I'm gonna watch her for a minute. What the hell is she up to? You see her open up some books, quickly flip through them, and put them back. Until about two minutes, you see her actually pull a book from the shelf. And then she goes into a drawer that's underneath the books. You see her rummaging for something, and you see her pull out something small, white, and square, and a, um, practically a pencil. And when she has those, she quietly shuts the door and walks back out. And... Kirish, you would see Amora walk back out past you onto the table 
and you would hear the faint scritchings of pencil to paper. Kirish is probably going to come to a little bit and look over and see what she's doing. You turn your head and you see that you recognize that the strokes of the pencil are not she's not writing anything but her face is concentrated with a slight scowl on her face and she's she's not even muttering she's just mouthing words and you you know the shape of what she's saying because you've seen sage and Rhea talk between the two of them you recognize she's muttering in elven he's out of the place where i'm at right yeah she basically walked in grabbed some supplies and walked out um i'm gonna go through well god i'm in bed i'm about to be asleep yes. never mind i need to go to sleep i need rest um i will note that it was peculiar to see her rifling stuff and i will um, make a mental note to ask her about it later all right then I'm going to doze off or try and get some rest. Kirish is going to come back into himself and uh, he's just going to kind of smirk at her and say coming back into yourself? Uh, planning to take on more armies by yourself? She doesn't break stroke, and her gaze doesn't leave the page, and she just replies with, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, she's more to burn, I suppose. Agreed. What are you up to, Amora? Mm hmm Lux pokes her head out from your shirt. I don't think she's fully listening to you. He just raises an eyebrow. I'm fully aware of that. Thank you. Imora. The pencil strokes stop. And she kind of blinks a little bit. She looks around. Oh, Kirish, I thought you'd be sleeping with the others by now. He just boinks. Imora, I've, I've been here the entire time. Her cheeks flush a little bit. Oh. Oh. Uh, you all... Right. What's that for? Drawing usually calms me down and helps me think things out. Drawing. Mm-hmm. Because to me that looks like letters and words and elven. She just blinks very confusedly and she shows the piece of paper. And from what you can see, there's... She started all the way on the left-hand side of the page in a landscape format. You see 11 oval shapes. And from the leftmost oval, you can see that the oval is starting to form into limbs almost like a so it's a very like childish drawing 
Yeah. It, it from I mean, she also just literally just started. Ah. Uh, apologies. I. I hmm. Sorry, I, I noticed something from distance and. Well. Anyways. Uh, I can see how that would help. Um. I suppose I need something like that in my life. Hobbies are good to have. Nice bit of stress relief. Hard to think about something like that when we have we have an entire continent to save from one idiot with a little bit of magic. She has a sly smile on her face, and she just slowly looks to the direction of Sage's bedroom. You may want to be a little bit more concise about that, because a few people fall under that title. Yeah, we do, as I walk through the doors, because I can't sleep, because now she <laughs> Duba got me curious, and I go back to sleep, so I got up, and now here we are. <laughs> yep. I had to take a little while to get dressed, because, you know... I was getting ready for bed. Ah. So what's you going well, on here, kids? Uh, trying to process the day, I suppose. You know, trying to process uh, the time since we landed on the ground. Didn't know who the hell we were. Till now is something that I still haven't been able to process. And I've, frankly, I've just put it in the God's hands. Said, <laughs> I'm your tool, use me as you will. No but amount about... of time seems enough, does it? No, I, and I'm about done with the letting the gods. I, I think I'm to the point where I need to do something. How do they call that? Uh, proactive. I don't know if it gets more proactive than actively rebelling against, well, an entire kingdom. Doesn't? Well, I know we've all said that, um, you know who has to die. Um, I really feel the need to strike the ending blow against you know who. So I think I'm going to take on some different training, if you will. And I just... So if I'm not around a whole lot, just understand that I'll be there. And I'm, I'm devoted to our cause. I just need to um, take a little bit of time to seek something that I do believe will be very, very helpful in our group. Just know, Bert, that you're not the only one who deserves to have the final say on his verdict. Oh, not at all. I mean, if anything, I think the, the people that have suffered the most at his hand should be the ones to decide his fate. Yes. And... Um... I mean, as much as I would like to leave it up to the gods, because, you know, his soul is going to be judged as well. I've been thinking of this, actually. And should we succeed in any plans that we may come up with for usurping his power, I think we should try and take him alive. Let him... Oh. Stand trial amongst all the people. I'm glad that you brought that up. That's... 
keeping him alive is something that I plan to dedicate myself to doing for as long as possible. While he's alive, he will be trapped in this world and not at the hands of the gods. And a person can be brought to the edge of death and healed infinite amount of times. But also remember he was burnt to ash and he came back. So keeping him alive won't be an issue. If it just I, I, I don't that was think him. that okay so I have a theory about this as well and I need to do some research upon it. I haven't told anybody my my real um, thoughts about you know who, but I will. I'll, I'll get there. I'm 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 right on the edge of being able to tell everybody that I believe we're hunting a lich. <clears throat> I want to say he's a lich. I don't know that he. Maybe he's not a lich. Maybe he's just got his essence to be re, re um re, not animated i don't want to say animated because that would make him seem like he's doesn't have a soul i believe he has a soul why would the pompous asshats that see themselves above us deem it fit to intervene in an affair that shouldn't involve them if he was just a lich. As you say this, Omora cocks her head <clears throat> and you feel a strong surge of energy and out of nowhere she just slams the kitchen table and she jumps at herself and just quickly shoves her hands, almost like puts her hands like in between her legs and just turns a beet red. Okay, Amora, what's wrong? What in the ever-living hells was that? What's wrong? What What just triggered that reaction? Continue on. It's fine. I have it under control. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You look like you're about to piss yourself. What? What happened? She is pointedly staring at the floor with with the mom look of wait until you get home, you're so going to get it. Oh. Looking at who? She's looking at the floor. Oh. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> um I'm gonna roll a diplomacy check. Alright. See if I can get her to <laughs> Basically, um, whatever, Amora, you ain't gonna fucking tell me anyway. Yeah, that was that was my attempt at diplomacy. Sure, you don't want to tell me what's going on, and then I just leave it alone. Um, the flush of her cheeks dies down, and the look of "you're gonna get it when we get home" look turns into a more relaxed with a hint of sorrow. I'm still processing things myself. <laughs> I will just, just go little... by and uh, sit, rest my, well, is Amora sitting down? Yeah, she's sitting down. Okay, because I couldn't reach her shoulder if she was standing up on the fucking door. <laughs> um, so I'll just place my hand upon her shoulder in the most um, fatherly way, I guess I could put it, um, and just tell her there's there's no time limit on healing. 
as you Take touch the time that you need. as you touch her you both would see there is a brief flash of panic as she like almost instinctively flinches away but from what you could feel she's abnormally cold for an elf not dead cold but colder than what she should be um more truthfully are you physically feeling all right other than feeling like i'm starving every five minutes after i eat yes you won't how long's it been since you or how long has it been that you've been feeling that way um she she cocks her head for about a month and a half which coincides the time that she got taken from you during the Battle of Gula? Is there a mirror nearby? Not one that you can move. There is a shiny polished tea kettle, though. Picking up the tea kettle and bringing it over. Um, and I see her reflection in it. You said you picked it up? Yeah. Picking up the tea kettle and, and looking in it. Can I see her reflection? Mm-hmm. Okay. Does it look the same as what, what she looks like? Yes. She's not a vampire. Roll me a heal check. 30 20. That's okay. 20. You ruled out you ruled out vampirism, and the only thing that makes sense to you is with someone that has naturally starved until they're used to eating a healthy amount and get back to normal eating habits, starvation victims will always feel this way. And especially so within a very L. So she was held captive and starved while she was held. Is what? From the moment that she escaped, that she disappeared from you? Yes. Um, but you also, ha you also remember that Amora could eat pretty much what all of you eat. She eats by herself. Because she isn't a very elf, so she burns through food and calories two to three Means times faster than you hungry. guys. Yep. Anyway, okay. Okay. It doesn't. It doesn't explain why she's cold. Okay, if you don't I mean you don't feel like you're sick or coming down with anything, you feel awfully cold. She kind of just shrugs. Hmm? Don't feel cold. Can I see her drawing? Her drawing visible to me? The book is open, and for right now, there are ten different sizes of ovals. And there's one that kind of looks like... A bubble figure so it's almost like a person but there's no definitive characteristics it's just like someone just drew a little person using um like curves like bubble letters so what you drawn she actually relaxes and smiles a little bit us everybody 
us, everybody, like everybody in Contra, or everybody in the kingdom, or everybody that's our allies. She actually perks up a little bit, and she actually brings the book and shows so, like, the both of you can see, and she points to various circles. So these are you guys. And then I plan to have Solas probably in the front here, probably along with Cricky, but I figured, but yeah, it's, so these five circles here, well, technically six, is Gondra, and then she points to circles on the left, and this is Grimiel, Keith, and that's going to be Riku, and then on the other side, and that's going to be Cricky, and that's going to be Mushu. I left some extra space just in case, you know, we pick up anybody along the way. <laughs> At our current rate, I wouldn't be surprised. Um. Well, that's nice. I, I, I like that you're mem memorializing everybody in a drawing. That's really nice. Um. If you guys will excuse me, I'm... I need to get rest because, well, I have some arduous tasks ahead of me that I think are going to be kind of exhausting. So I need to go get my rest. I will. Are you guys going to be here in a few hours when I get up? As you go to go to bed, you hear someone rustling and roll over. Oh, you couldn't take this somewhere else? Some of us are trying to sleep. Nope, get used to it. It's not your house. Who the hell is that that's complaining? You oh, look over and you see Keith slowly sitting up. Oh, my, my apologies, Keith. I didn't know I was being loud. Um, If you roll over and go back to sleep, you'll be fine. I'm laying down right now to go sleep myself. No, it's not just you. Oh, fuck it, I'm up. And he's gonna sit up and stretch. What time is it? It would be about... Let's see, funeral happened at sundown, so we'll say 8 o'clock. So it's pretty much about 10 o'clock at night. Okay, yeah. I'm following my sleeping area, and I'm gonna close my eyes and go to sleep. You're just about to close your eyes. Well, Kirish has a good time as any. There's no one awake, no disturbances. Do you want to go train? Oh, this is sudden. You're not even going to take me out for dinner. He blinks. Amora blinks. Uh, training. We finally have a moment for you to actually. It was a funny. He Keith. made a funny ha -ha, laugh. Yes, it's a joke, Keith. Take it as such. By the gods, you're gonna have to work on your sense of humor, there, bud. Definitely. He he blinks. I just woke up. My brain isn't fully functioning yet. Then how do I expect you to be able to train me in something that I knew nothing about? Because the cold desert air will wake me up, plus walking along. A nice little bit of cardio before we get started. I smell bullshit here, but alright. What are you training in? I am teaching Kirish to become a desk blade. Basically, being able to put your spells upon your weapon and smite your foes. That's it's something, something we've been meaning to work on for quite, quite some time and haven't had any time for it. Gotcha. Oh, yes. But, Bert, if you want, you can come along. Maybe you'll learn to swing that fancy new hammer of yours a little bit better. Um, that sounds splendid. 
Um, oh, but I thought you were so tired. I do. Well, are you guys going now? Yep. Yes. Oh. Well. I'll throw in some alcohol. I'm not getting any damn sleep anyway. Screw it. And with that, he gets up and just cleans up his area real quick and puts his stuff on and puts his stuff away. And... As you come out, Keith is holding by just below the bottom of the cork. He has a bottle. And he's kind of like tilting it back and forth. And you immediately know, just by the way that the bottle is shaped and the label on the front, this is Dwarven made. Oh, alrighty. Now you got my attention. What you got in the bottle? He smiles. None other. Then Dwarven Rum. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what? Who? So this is Keith, right? This is Keith. Okay. Do you want a gout of fire to come out of oh, his ass? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. See, Dwarven Rum is a different animal altogether. Let me see that bottle right quick. Oh my. He hands over the bottle and he I has such quickly, an impish smile across his face. I quickly put it in my bag out of sight and we're like, we're going to save that for just a little while. Can't train while I'm drunk. Well, I shouldn't train while I'm drunk. Does Kirish actually know what he would be thinking? Or what this does to him. You only really There's... noticed what happens with rum, but not dwarven made rum. All you can think of is, oh god, it's bum it's rum 2000. Worse. Right? It's gonna be worse. Um, One would think. Possibly so, yes. Um, um... But yeah, um, we're just gonna put it away in his bag and thank Keith profusely and be like, man, uh, I'm gonna crack into this in just a little bit, but yeah, let's go. And, uh, Irish, let's go. We'll go. We'll go do this. Guess I'm being dragged away, Amora. I, um, I hope you're drawing him. He's busy anyway. Let's go. She actually has a genuine smile on her face and her wings kind of twitch a little bit. Almost like the same way that Darling does when he's happy. Oh, trust me. Hopefully I can get a good decent bit done before you all come back. And if not, you're more than welcome to come and watch me follow my ass. I was going to say, Amora, you could come train with us, too. I mean, kind of looks like you need it. And her happy demeanor <laughs> immediately... Kirish just does a slow turn to Keith. Did you really just <laughs> say that to her? Over. Are you fucking stupid? Her happy demeanor immediately turns stoic. And she slowly gets up, and Keith just looks up at her. Because she is a good foot taller than him. And she slowly walks over. And as she walks by, you can actually see why he said that. Because before you were all distracted with her well-being, the events of the town, trying to make sure she doesn't go supernova in the desert. But... You don't know how she's able to support herself because she's practically skin, bone, and scars. And she towers over him. 
Is there I any love... healing that I know of that can help that? Not that you can think of. And obviously nothing that Riku can think of, because she was in Riku's care for a good few days. Okay. I look like I need training. Is that what you said? He kind of just... You just kind of, like, see him, like, shrink his neck in, trying to turtle. Amora, I, mean, I think what he meant was you yourself try to keep yourself to the highest of standards, and that takes training. So, yes, you could always use training. That's how you get better. Don't think he meant truly to offend you. Or he did, and he's just trying to provoke her into actually training. But I didn't say that. You see the tip of her ear twitch in your direction. All right, Keith. He just has a playful smile on his face. <laughs> All right, oh, Keith. Dude. If you think I look like I need training, after you're done, ta after you're done training Kirish and he's resting from the session, how about you and I have a go? And I'll even let you have the advantage of having magic. I don't think that's fair because I have armor and you don't. I do have armor. It's just lying abandoned in the sands. So I'm going to go get it and I'm going to put it on. And then I'm going to shove your face through the sand. And possibly some of the glass too. Okay, well, this is taking a turn for the worst. Can we agree not kill one another while training? Probably not. Okay. I mean, Off we, go. we can always do fisticuffs too. And yet somehow I think you put him all the way on the other side of the desert. She gives a very wide smile of, I don't care. And Keith just, like, sidles, sidesteps around her, never turning his back to her, backs up to the door, flails around for the doorknob, opens it, and leaves the house. Well, it was nice seeing you, Grameel. Uh, oh god, not Grameel. Oh my god. Oh, too <laughs> soon. Too wow. soon. Amor <laughs> just turns her wow, head. Wow, oh, off. For real? Like, <laughs> what? Said, <"Gay>, fuck off. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> Damn, bro. Uh, Ouch. Just because I'm done doesn't mean the character is. <laughs> me heart. Me heart. <laughs> Amora just smirks, walks over to the table, grabs her supplies, and she follows Keith out. Kirish just whispers to, to Bert when they leave. Why do I feel like there's about to be another funeral? There's definitely going to be another one. Just not sure if it's going to be today or not. Thank you for the profound fortune telling. No, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. If I, we'll, we'll see. I don't know what you want me to say, really, because I, I can't believe that somebody going to test a more of this early. I wouldn't have. I wasn't going to say anything like that to Amora, but... Whatever, it's his funeral, not mine. Exactly what I'm saying. She's going to kill him. All right. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got what you were get. saying. I just didn't know if it was going to be today or not. Stupid dogs. You follow everyone now, 
and Keith is about five feet ahead of Amora and kind of checking back and if he feels that she's too close he kind of like skips forward a little bit and you realize this because as they're walking if he gets too close she takes her wing and she smacks him upside the head and you get to the surface and the desert air is cool there is a nice breeze Keith waits for everybody to get there. You all get up there and there is a soft rumbling in the distance and you see the dragon siblings just kind of almost like in a dragon puddle with Ishtar in the middle and Aselde curled up in a little dragon ball, and Zundis just spread-eagled out. Meanwhile, Istral is sleeping loaf-style in between the two of them, and her wings are draped over across the other two. And... Omura looks around and starts walking... in this direction. And she looks down. And you're only able to see this because you all have low light vision. And or dark vision. And you see her pick up her pieces of armor and just dust it off. And she slowly puts it on. And she walks back over with the helmet under her arm. And she has a shitting and grin on her face. I'm not so sure how how concerned I should be. That look on her face. Reaching out, you might want to run. Yeah, 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 you yeah, might. Mm hmm. Keith just looks over to Amora and just kind of slides over away from her. And she just gives you both a wink. And she will sit down a good distance away. And she looks around as she opens the book. She just shrugs and she starts going back to her doodles. Right. Well, this is going to be the hardest part of training. Um, Bert, I may need you to be on standby if Kirish passes out. Wait, what? Lux comes out of your shirt and hisses, and Amora's head snaps up so quickly you can actually hear her neck crack. What do you Jesus mean? Christ. <laughs> um, so, so hold on a second. What, what are we talking about here? Like, unconscious from, like, uh, a punch? Knocked out? Well... Or are we talking about unconscious from pain? Probably from pain. Kirish, you have the capabilities of both being a fighter and a mage. Well, yes, that's kind of why I normally go around with... He holds up his axe and his shield. <laughs> and, you know, throwing porpoises in the swamp. <laughs> he and Amora both start giggling. Well, him a chuckle, Amora a giggle. And... He nods his head. Yes, but... This is going to sound strange, but your mind and body are not one and the same. They've been trained as... Hmm. 
think of it think about it like food you have potatoes and you have butter but they each taste good separately but they taste a lot better when they're together your body is lacking that togetherness it's not linked And his face is that of a hopeful of, I really hope you understand what I'm getting at. So, are you saying I'm a potato? He face palms. Uh, your... The end goal is mashed potatoes mixed with butter. Right now, you have both the potato, the whole potato... And the whole stick of butter. Keith, who's the butter here? Uh, did, are you trying to set me up? What, what's going on? Okay, so your fighting skills. You can't put butter on me. Pretty sure he just called you a potato. Exactly. He, I'm hearing this as well. He just drops his hand, and Amora just chuckles. What he's trying to say is that your body is trained for physical combat while your mind is trained for magical. What needs to happen is both your mind and body have to be trained for both at the same time. Look, why couldn't you have just said that? Keith blinks. I figured break it down to the basics and you could understand. Keith, they're over here talking about lunch, and, and, you know, Amora's the only one actually making sense talking about training here. She just looks up, gives a thumbs up, and goes back to her doodles. And for the record, for the most part, I'm fucking with you. Let's get started. <laughs> he, his face goes solemn, and he begins to glow with with beige energy, and in his one hand are scarabs. Very familiar to what you've seen destroy your swarm of bats, the five-armed weird mud creature that Korok summoned, and the Dark Ruler. However, that magic, the beige magic splits in two, and in his other hand are nicer looking, more like Golden beetles. More like pets. Instead of attackers. You may want to... Oh, wow. This is going to sound so horrible. But... You may want to remove your personal effects, Lux. And at least your shirt for this. Oh. Okay, so now, before this happens, I'm going to take a few steps over to Kairish. Actually, I'm going to walk around to the other side of Kairish and uh, be like, hey, before you get into this, why don't you take a drink of this? And I reach down my thing and I grab that dwarven rum. So I want you to take a big old drink of this real quick. Promise it'll lessen the pain. You have no faith in me, do you? I didn't say that I didn't have faith in you. I just you go through less pain. You have no faith. Okay. Are you going to drink this liquor or not? Because if not, I'm not going to waste it. Fuck it, fine, yes. All right, that's what I thought. Takes the bottle and takes the swig of it. <laughs> Um, you take a swig of it. Erupts into fire. Oh, god damn. Kirish. Uh-oh. Likely confidence? <laughs> um. Pick an ability. Wait a minute, pick a stat. A stat? Pick a stat. Yeah. Uh, 
dexterity. This will be accounted for after this ritual is done. But once the ritual is done, you are going to add five whole points to your dexterity. <laughs> what? We'll see. <laughs> hmm. That's wonderful. <laughs> oh now, that's wonderful. God. But holy shit. <laughs> Fucking hell! I didn't say drink at all, fucker. <laughs> no, no, this is just a normal swig. This is just oh, well, holy fuck! Like a shot, okay, a shot's worth. Yeah, yeah. That shot. make you feel better? Damn, but you say this is dwarven? What it was. That's what it was described to me as, and it looked like it did the bottle and everything looked kind of, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's door of a room. It goes down smooth. It almost tastes like water, but it's, it's spiced enough to where it doesn't burn at all. It doesn't burn when it starts, it doesn't burn when it goes down in there, it doesn't burn afterward. It's almost just like perfectly spiced water. That is some potent and very dangerous brew right there. I'll grab the bottle and tip it back, take a swig, and say cheers. cheers. How much do you drink? Oh, right. A uh, couple. Well, I mean, it's me. The, I mean. All right. So, like, how many shots? Fuck. Hold on. I gotta. I gotta roll a D four for this one. Okay. Because three, three. You take three so shots. So holy, but Jesus. Bert, pick a stat. We're gonna go with. Wisdom. Add five points Bad. to your total wisdom score. Holy but Jesus. Um, is this a permanent thing? Or yes. Thing? Permanent. Okay, holy crap. Um, that Shot number that. two. Yeah, Dex. Add three to your base. What I'm getting out of this is that in order to defeat the Dark Lord, we all have to become a bunch of drunks. <laughs> hey. All right, final shot. Strength. Oh, We're just gonna go with it. Go with strength. Yep, yep. Add six points to your base strength. Oh damn it, man. Um. No, that's not right. All right. Um. Damn. Okay, so that changed some things. Oh yeah. All right. Um, how much was in this bottle? You guys, it's not even down to the bottom of the neck. You only took four shots out of it. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> yeah, this, um, if I feel the differences. Kirish. Like you feel, after taking the shot and savoring the flavor, while you're standing there, you're kind of, you're. it's like your body's ready to go. Like, you're ready to jump, ready to do some parkour, you're ready to go. Bert, you feel this. You feel like a lot of the mental puzzle pieces are connecting. Almost like your fatherly wisdom has amplified. You feel equally light on your feet but you also feel like if it comes down to blows you might just be able to wield your dwarven warhammer with one hand you know that at this point Kirish is about to fucking strip naked 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't strip naked. All you want's crying is your uh, shirt. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, he's also not a dwarf and um, not that much of an alcoholic. So, this is probably lighting him up. Keith just looks between the two of you. Go away, Ed. Irish, you feeling okay? Yep, never better. I'm ready to kick your ass. He just looks slowly to Bert. What? Oh my gods. That's Dwarven Maid. A lot of people can't handle Dwarven Maid shit. Oh no. <gasps> you know what we need to do? We need to spike Sage's coffee with this. Oh, that's a fantastic idea. That, that sounds lovely. I, Amora pipes up, I would love to see a shit face Sage. Oh my goodness, uh, yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. Well, um. I, I'm gonna. I'm feeling kind of feeling myself right now, so I'm gonna grab a. Uh, I'm gonna grab my weapon out, and. Uh, See what we can do with it. Kirish, do you set aside the belongings that Keith told you to? Uh, yeah. That's kind of what he was getting down oh, to, yeah. Okay. Lux kind of curls upon your bag and just sits there. Giving Keith such stink eye, it makes Bert's bum rum look like a bottle of perfume. Amora comes up and picks up your belongings to get them out of the way. And Lux just automatically just coils around her arm. And you feel almost a like, slight contentment with a little hint of worry as Lux kind of tungulates at her at her chain burns. Oh, oh, what? So <laughs> she sits back down and watches and Amara goes back to her doodling and you see Lux kind of just resting her head atop of Amara's watching and you just get a sense of of kind of like ambitionous through your bond. Keith walks forward and he raises his palm with the nasty looking scarabs. And this is the first time you've actually seen him actually do hand signs a chanting anything for this entire time it's always just been silence or his weapon would just erupt in whatever spell may the scarabs has his shield up at the ready <laughs> he Keith cocks his head at the shield and he closes his eyes as the little as the nasty looking scarabs on his hand start to glow beige and become a lot more excited. May the scarabs eat away at your weakness and grant it to me. And as he finishes, the scarabs nearly launch off of your hand, and off of his hand, and they go under your shield, and you hear little tinging sounds as they bite at it, and then your skin crawls as they go over your arm, your shoulder, across the rest of your torso, 
and they begin biting at you. Bert, from your perspective, you just see these nasty looking beige beetles crawl over Kirish, and you can actually start to see him bleed a little bit as they bite him. Lux perks up, sees what's happening. The both of you roll a spot check, but Kirish, you roll with disadvantage. I rolled a natural one. Ooh. But. And a seven. Yeah. Wow, I'm looking at a 7 here. Okay. Wait, no, 17, sorry. A 17 with disadvantage? <clears throat> yeah. Holy shit. Bert, That's you... Awesome. I got a plus 10 modifier, so... God damn. Bert, you <laughs> are too shocked at the fact that an ally, a friend, is actively, actively attacking someone you hold dear to you. You don't see this, but Kirish, you're able to see Lux look up and spring forward and she plops in the sand and you just see her fl almost fly through the sand as she goes through it and she latches onto Keith's leg. She doesn't bite but she constricts and you almost see like the magic flicker, but it's but it stays, and the scarabs bite you. And as they keep biting you, the weaker and weaker you feel. Not only just physically, like it's almost like everything you're carrying is too much. And you feel your connection to your magic waver that so much so that your runes actually start to flicker almost like a light just about to blow and the biting stops but the pain is still there and the scarabs go back to keith And the energy that they hold, because they are a very in-your-face beige. Like, it is almost like he's holding a fireball of beige in his hand. It disappears into his hand, and... Bert, you were focused on the scarabs, but when you see him go back to Keith, when they go back, when they all collectively land on Keith's hand, they kind of just dissipate in a beige mist and you see that energy that they had get absorbed into Keith to where it's almost like an aura glow outline of his hand. And that's when you hear a cracking noise. And Keith drops to one knee. How did the two of you respond at this point? I'm confused on how to respond, honestly. Um, hmm. Keith. Did, is this... did Keith attack him, or did Keith... I don't know. Just one of those things where... I don't know if I'm, if I'm happy that Keith's on his knees racked with I don't know what or if I I mean he's the one that gave me the rum that can't imagine he'd want to do harm to us but I'm confused by it is yeah Keith are, are you alright? he grits his teeth and slowly nods and you hear what looks like fabric to be moving and you see Lux start to peek at his shoulder and she wraps around his neck and you just feel 
rage. Right, right. Lux, just tune it down a bit. Tune it down. Her tail violently shakes at the end, at the tip of her tail. And she has her mouth just open enough to where you can see the base of her fangs. And she is staring hardcore at his jugular. Lux. Tone it down. Please. Alright. Hurts, yes. Like, 50 devils just burn through my ass, but... <laughs> it's fine. Through his gritted teeth, he holds up the pet-looking scarabs up towards you. Restore what has been taken. Meant the body and the mind. To be as one. And the scarabs lightly lift off, and wherever the nasty looking beetles bit you, they settle down and they give a nice soft chirping noise. Almost like muted cricket sounds, but not as high pitched. And Bert, you can see at least the bite marks starting to heal up in Kirish. As your wounds heal, the you feel more in line with yourself. More attuned to what your fighting style is. And seeing you being somewhat healed, Lux fully relaxes and she goes back to go back to her perch and you feel the sense of surprise from your bond. What was that about? What did that demonstrate? healing so quickly the beetles took the separation weakened Kirish enough so when the healing scarabs healed the wounds they made it so his mind and body were attuned to each other With this, Tita, Dusk Blades take a different skill set than sorcerers and normal fighters. You're able to reroll your stats to accommodate for this. Keith kind of falls to his side. You can see that Lux was pretty pissed off at the nasty scarabs and try to break Keith's concentration by snapping his leg. So I need to heal him? Yes. As you go up and touch Keith, your puke green magic flows over him and centers on his leg, and you hear a really ucky, another cracking noise as the bone sets itself, and Keith just kind of just... Mm -hmm as this happens and it heals all the tissues and whatnot and he's able to stand mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Bert, for that. That is something I never thought I would feel in my life, but here we are. Well, and yeah, Snake gets kind of moody. I can see that. That wasn't particularly expected, but um, I believe the phrase is get wrecked, son. Well. He he chuckles and offers you a hand to help you stand, Kirish. He takes it. Right, well, you're about to get wrecked after this training session. Alrighty then. As Keith goes to turn, he kind of stops and just almost backs up into you. There's no need for that. Just calm down. Put it down. And you see him kind of like raise his hands up and kind of like slowly lower them. And Kiris, you're seven foot tall. You're able to see this. There is Amora with her sword raised, shaking with the face of, I really don't want to do this. Amora, what, what are you doing? She slowly lowers the blade. I just saw Keith do magic and... It was hurting you, and Lux took off, and I thought she was going to sink into the sands, and then I saw her break Keith's leg, and I thought, well, if she's attacking, there's something serious, and I saw you bleeding. I'm just going to go back to my drawing. And she's going to sheathe her blade and kind of just, like, awkwardly step back to where her book and drawing utensils have been tossed to the side in a hurry. I think it would help everybody involved if you just explain your teaching method here. Please. Like I said also earlier, <laughs> like I said before, your mind and your body were trained separately for the Dusk Blade to properly execute not only physical capabilities but magical at the same time. They need to be one and the same. With you being trained the way you were for so long, it would be harder for you to retrain you this way you're starting fresh you still have you know your physical capabilities and your magic power but you're now combining them into one entity one type of training yes but that doesn't exactly explain why you attacked me with scarabs The scarabs take, as you've seen, energies and they were at first parasites. They would just take from the host and I would gain full benefit. But through practice and training, I've managed to make two separate kinds, two separate kinds, one, two, take away that power, but the healing scarabs not only heal your wounds, but they reform that energy, those separate energies, and they melt it into one. Really wish I could understand your teaching processes here. 
Don't you think it would have been wise to explain that book for just sending them at me? Hindsight, yes. Yeah. But you're also my first pupil, so learning curve? Well, this learning curve is going to summon a swarm of bats over you if you do it again. Well, oh, hope good. Hopefully there won't be a second time of me doing this. If there is, you're doing something wrong. Yes, if there is, you're doing something wrong. He draws right, his let's continue. He draws his blade. Uh you may want to put yourself back on. Keith. Come on, man. Do you want to be in the nude or not? Well, I figured you didn't want to have your clothes ripped to shreds by the nasty scarab, so I mean, unless you want to train without a shirt on, that's all up to you. You're the gods, man. You believe this, Bert? Takes me on a date and asks me to disrobe and then put him back on. All the meanwhile, not even giving me the pleasure I'm looking for. You believe part of your lesson is to just follow orders? I mean, if it make you feel better, I could disrobe his bow. I mean, if we're getting naked, let's... All right, everybody. You don't want to see this naked. I promise. <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. Wow, Kirish, how did you learn to become a dusk blade? I strip naked in the desert with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if we have to, like... There is amusement through your bond, through Lux, as she continues watching Amora doodle. Oh, God. You hear slight hissings, and you hear just normal, distracted Amora grunts. And finally... Kiri, she doesn't want to do it, even though she said she was going to train and kick Keith's ass. She's too busy doodling. Oh, that's a shame. I'll do it for you. Amora looks- you just see the cor you just see her eye come up through the top of the book. You see it blink a couple times, goes back behind the book. Come on, Amora, I know you want to. You know, it'd be great if I could understand you, but I can't. Kirsch just leans over to Bert. She's totally drawing this naked. Well, I mean, I hope she gets it right. Makes me look good. I mean, even if they're stick figures, you know, just... Sure. Put a little twig and berries on there, it'll be fine. Yeah, indeed. Right, Keys, what are we doing? So we're going to do some basic training exercises, getting used to movement of the weapon. But for you, Kirish, you already know how to put spell and blade together. A little bit, <clears throat> uh, all. The next step is for you to strike your target with the spell. See how the range is. See if you actually have to hit the person or not, because certain spells, you could just barely graze their armor and the spells will go onto the person. Others, you actually have to make physical contact with skin for others. Right now, we're going to go through the motions of just grazing the target. He pulls out so, his... 
his sword and you see it's just a normal sword and all of a sudden from the hill to the tip it starts sparking in beige magic right so Bert, I know you're not much of a combat caster, but I think um, having a bit of a friendly spar between the two of you will be able to help you get more familiar with your weapons and whatnot. Kirsch, whatever lightning spell you have. Spar with Kirsch? Okay. I don't have any. Oh, well, we'll fix that. And even though he still has the beige electricity going in his free hand, are the... Nice, the pet scarabs. And they start glowing with beige energy, and... They come over to you, and they scuttle around your head, and as you do, you're able... You feel something surge in you, a new type of magic that some of it feels familiar, but others, you've never had access to these spells. These are usually sages type of spells. And you actually see the beige electricity dim a little bit. You should have some of my basic spells to at least get you started until you're... Until you figured out what spells you have and whatnot. But for right now, you have about three of each. That should be able to get you through this session. Uh, you're also muted, dear. So Bless you. Oh god. <laughs> I reversed. <laughs> Who are we sparring with? That's my question. Oh, what do you mean? Am I I'm... sparring with you? I'm fairly certain. Okay, well. Are we? Keith? Yes? Yes, you and Bert. Oh, yeah. okay. And. Amori, do you want to have a go? Her head shoots up. Yes. And she puts the book and supplies neatly down. She comes up. And she draws her sword. Oh, this will be perfect. Two non-combat casters versus two combat casters. So, Kirish, with something like electricity... You'll be able to graze. You'll be able to graze their armor, and as electricity does in the wild, it'll arc and still hit your target. Now the question is, is if I can actually hit mine. So obviously, electricity is an elemental damage, but can other spells be applied? Uh... Such as ghost sound, or charm person, song. Ghost sound? Not too sure. I mean, if you attached it to a crossbow bolt, definitely. Charm person? It would probably be the... That could definitely work from long range. The only thing is, is you have to see the person and they have to be able to hear you in order for that to work at least. Alright. So the spells can be applied. Very well, thank you. Alright, let's begin. Alright. Bert and Kirish, you two are sparring, and as an example, Keith is going to raise his blade to Amora, who looks a little bit too excited for this. 
Oh, I'm sure she is. Hurt. Wow, Bert, we haven't done this in... Have we ever? I'm not sure we have. This will be fantastic, shall it? Yeah, I suppose. You you pull. in the desert dueling? What are you gonna duel with? I don't have a sword. I have my hammer. Guess I could wield that. Bet. Bet. We're in the nude. We're going to sword fight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you go back and forth, you see Keith swing his sword. Amora doesn't even go to dodge, but you hear the tink of metal as the tip of his sword hits Amora's shoulder. And she smirks, and then you just see her convulse as the electricity just shoots off of the blade and over her. And she convulses down to one knee. Now that's with grazing the armor. Now imagine if I actually hit her. This is your lucky sh shot. And she is going to stand to her feet. Her short hair more like a curly afro from the shock. She's going to raise her own rapier and... She's going to take a slash at him. Oh, fuck. <laughs> uh, if they confirm the crit? Oh, God, she does. And... A little bit slower than normal, but with almost just as much force... You see her take the flat of the blade, and you just hear this resounding smack as the blade hits Keith at the side of the face and follows through to where it actually grazes some of the top of his head scales off. And he just kind of just stands there and blinks as a small bit of blood trickles down his forehead. And you see the blade kind of wavering back and forth and her arm shaking a little bit. Right. Your guys go. Very well. He turns back to Bert with his wicked smile. And this shot. drunken, wicked smile. And, and, and he gets shot in the fucking arse with a crossbow bolt. <laughs> oh, was I not supposed to be sparring with him? I thought he should have protected himself better. <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm a complete non-combat, like, non-combat caster, so... Hmm. Who wants to go first? I was gonna say, do we roll initiative, or...? Uh, probably. Yeah, if you want. Uh, I got ten. Seventeen. Two. I get to go first. I'm going yes. to hit him with a... Your total is twenty-one. Yeah, 21 definitely hits your AC of 13. Oh my god. Oh, it would have hit me before, too. That's 8. Plus 4 is 11. Cool. 15 points of bludgeoning damage. So what you're saying is you're kicking my ass right now. Girish. You are all excited. You're ready to go, and all of a sudden, you weren't expecting Bert to make the first move, and his hammer just comes smacking you in the middle of the chest. As the cold steel touches your skin. Kirish, how do you respond? Your axe is ready to go. Alright, DM. You ready for this bullshittery? Mm-hmm. Cool. Bert, you ready for this bullshittery? I doubt it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it as well. I have a feel. I have a feeling it's gonna hurt. 
All right, so Kira starts off with imbuing his shield with a spell. Okay. Free action. Yeah. Does, does not or does invoke attack of opportunity. With dusk planes, it does not. It's not okay. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Second off, he's going to follow up with striking with the battle axe. Okay. Roll to hit. Yeah. Holy it. shit. Oh, there we go. Well, you hit my AC. Now what? Uh, roll for damage. Now I hurt. You're hurting me, Kyra. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> wow. <mad>. Rip. <laughs> More damage, Fuck it, huh? rip. Wait, Hell what's yeah. the battle axe damage? A 1d8? Oh, you rolled a nat 1. Goddamn. Yeah, I nat 1 that shit. Ooh. Uh, right. Okay. So, on his hit, okay? He unleashes what? Would it be a free action to drop the shield and basically, like, hit his knee with it? Like, Kirsch's self. You gonna throw your shield at my knee? No, not you. Oh. Himself. Oh. Basically gonna hit himself with it. You... Okay, hold on. <laughs> DM did not respond. Right? <laughs> all right, so she's like, oh, I guess you can all right, so, so Kirish, you go to swing your axe, and Bert, you see this, and Kirish, you're so used to swinging the sharp end at people, you realize, oh God, it's Bert shirtless. So you, in the middle of your swing, you twist it, and it hits him in the flat. You hit him in the flat of the blade but as it bounces off the awkwardness causes you to kind of jolt back and your hand loosens and you forgot to tighten your shield straps to adjust for you not wearing your shirt so it has slipped off and you feel a sharp scrape of pain as one of these spokes pierces your skin from the shield Yes. So it activate. Yes. Okay. Kirish blips out of existence. Is Wait, Bert what, huh? caught up what? Wears? what the fuck just happened? Kirish, I told you to Well Put the weapon on the sword. Where did he go? Is uh, I'm Hmm. Does that make it the end of his turn? It does indeed. It's my turn. Uh, it is Keith and Amora's turn. Oh, yeah. And Keith is going to look at Amora. Well, I was going to show him what kind of spells actually need to pierce the flesh. I swear to God, if you're playing hooky, I'm going to find you and wring your neck. And his blade glows with beige-ish color tinted with gray. And he is going to strike Amora. For a hit, for a solid hit. You actually see it make solid contact with the armor, and even though it clings, you see that Amora looks very weakened. She struggles to stand. Now that is a spell where you need to make direct contact. Usually your touch spells need to have more of a direct contact because usually for other casters they have to be touching the person in order for it to work so hopefully you're watching and you can see this and take note that you need to hit the target amora just 
looks exhausted. She struggles to stand. And she will try and smack Keith again with the flat of the rapier. And whatever spell Keith hit her, hit her with was too much. And her blade misses him by a good two inches. Bert, it is this it is your turn again. Hmm. And it appears that he has disappeared. Yes. Well, um I'm gonna cast a spell magic. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oof. Bert, you, this was <laughs> this was not part of the plan. You cast a spell magic and your pukey magic kind of goes in front of you and it solidifies on the outline of Kirish who is in the middle of starting to do a squat. And right now it looks like he's just about to take a poop on the desert floor in front of you. <laughs> oh. Oh, you want to play with who do you? He just, like, looks up, like, wait, what? I would say with you being half squat, you're actually eye level with Bert. <laughs> oh. Oh my god, that's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. Fucking rip. <laughs> oh, goodness. He just blinks, like, oh, um. <laughs> he just kind of waves. <laughs> Step then. Yeah. There. Kirish. <laughs> Your turn. He is completely foregoing the spells that Keith has given him access to. Kirish is going to uh, cast Tensor's floating disc on the axe. And, uh,. <laughs> Okay. You're gonna make me float? Yup. If he hits you. If he hits. Oh. Hold on a second. Alright, roll for damage. Or roll to hit. I gotta roll to hit first. 23. Yeah, I'd say that hits. Uh, roll for damage. Did you just hit me? Yep. <laughs> For nine damage. <laughs> okay. So. 13 damage you've done so far. To apply <laughs> Tensor's Bloody Disc to him. So, with how the disc works, it always stays three feet off the ground. Um, I'm hoping to God this doesn't just cut him in half. <laughs> uh, no, when you hit him, Bert starts... Bert, you feel the cold smack of the axe hit your chest, and you just shrug it off like, that's all you've got? And then you realize, is Kira shrinking, or am I getting taller? And you realize you're floating three feet off the ground. You're eye level with Kirish. How quickly does it go up? Uh... I, I'm not assuming it's going to, like, launch him into the air like oh, a catapult. But no, gradual. Is it going to throw him off? No, like, he is... Him, it's like someone cast the spell yeah. levitate on him. But, uh, is it going to throw him off balance, I should... I would say yes. So, a balance check. 16. You man it. You are off-put by being slowly levitated in the air and after a little bit of wobbling you kind of have your arms kind of almost like you're t-posing for dominance but you're managed to keep your balance even though you're a slightly little bit wobbly but you have enough to um keep you steady okay <sighs> i like this you're not hurting me I mean, yeah. I am going 
to immediately target and dispel myself. It is not your turn. Oh, shite. So I'm going to float for a minute. Yep. And then I will. Sounds good to me. So, Keith looks over. He nods. Very good. Both of you. Curious for picking it up a lot more easier. You seem to be getting a lot cleaner with the transitioning. And very, very good for for, for making uh, good hits. Yes, we are all topless. Well, we don't have armor on our chest, which makes things easier. But at least you're getting the feel for everything. Now, Kirish, the next step. This is going to require a little bit more delicacy. And a little bit more finesse. In your shield arm, I want you to hold one hand. In the other, I want you to have a different spell. Have one be something you would throw. The other one where you have to touch the person. I'll be right back, guys. Okay. And... So... What he does is you see in his empty hand, Bay's magic glow. And... It's almost like a beige with a hint of green. And in his sword arm, it turns beige, but there's also a blood red tint around the edge of the blade. And he nods to Amora. She shakily picks up her sword and she attempts to disarm Keith. She doesn't manage to disarm him, but she does smack. You do hear a resounding smack off of his forearm. But it was just enough force that it's just too much for Amora to bear. And she kind of hunkers down with the weight of the blade and the shock coming from it. Bert, it is now your turn again. Dispel um, magic. Alright, you take your uh, turn. What's that? Uh, were you finished explaining? Um, I was going to um, targeted dispel myself. Spell magic on myself so that I'm no longer floating. And, um. Yeah, let's see here. Hold on. So I have to. Um. Take another five foot step back. <laughs> Pew green mist forms around Bert, and he. Curious, you no longer can see Bert in the eye. But you can see him slowly levitate down as he walks backwards away from you. It is now your turn. Going to cast Ghost Sound on the axe. Okay. And Invisibility on my hand. And uh, Con Joke. Did you say Ghost Sound? No. That'd be weird. I will. I was just gonna say. Uh, 13. <clears throat> what do you cast first? I would have to cast onto the axe first, right? Mm -mm, doesn't matter. Well, I have to have my other hand to do it. Don't I? Not necessarily. Okay, well... Uh, probably gonna do Ghost Sound first. Okay. So, 
your axe, your light blue magic swirls up the axe head, and there's a very faint thrumming sound that only you can hear. When you go to cast invisibility in your shield arm, the thrumming lessens. It almost flickers in and out a little bit. You have both spells, but they are just barely there. They are very weakened. Oh god. Um. Well then. That's not fantastic. Uh. Okay. I can still attack or? No. It... Okay. Can After... I move? <laughs> uh, no. Because you don't have quick cast as a feat, so your free cast was ghost hand, and then your the rest of your turn was getting invisibility. Okay. Yeah. Um. Heath looks over, and he nods. Good start, good start. That'll... That is a little bit tricky. Because the more you do it, the more it'll be stronger. And practice takes time. But you still have it. That's a good point. And he's so busy... He looks forward, and he sees Amora kind of hunched over. And he looks... A little bit sad. And... This is kind of why I love being a Duskblade. Because I can do stuff like this. He is going to... You just see Keith pull back with his left hand and punch Amora. And it hits her square in the head... And as he does, the you hear what sounds like bubbles popping noises, and she's just covered in, thankfully not corrosive, acid. And you just smell like sulfur emanating off of her. And as she shakes her head to retaliate, he brings down the sword onto the back of her shoulders and you see you hear the clank of metal on metal and he hit her so hard that she actually flops down onto the ground as from the blood little bit of blood on her face you see it actually trail up into the sword. The sword glows brighter. And you see the scales that were missing from the top of Keith's head heal. And the sword... And the sword, um, stops glowing with the magic. He looks down at Amora, who is... struggling to get up. And... He helps her up, puts one arm around his shoulders, and walks her away from the combat area. And stands a little bit in front of her as he watches you and Bert spar. I'm not done with you yet. Oh, you very much are. You can barely stand on your own, let alone wield a weapon. You're done for the day. You can find me later when you're feeling better. But for now, we get to watch Bert and Kirish beat the fuck out of each other. 
So enjoy yourself. Bert, it is your turn. Uh, um, well, let's see. He barely hit me last time. I almost feel bad for doing this to him. Does an 18 hit your AC, dear? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Roll for damage. Yeah. This one's gonna hurt a little bit. 17 points. Alright. Uh, and Bert, roll a d100 for me to see if your sand actually hits him in the face. Oh. Roll to seven. Bert, you as you walk forward, you drag your your leg through the depth through the sand, and when you pick it up, you try and kick the sand, and you kick with all your might. But Kirish is very tall. If you were to try to, yeah, you kick the sand up, and you manage to get the sand to his belly. And he now has the awkward feeling of sand in his pants as it travels down. Curious, you're you look down and you see the sand hit you and start to tickle you. But you made the one mistake of battle. You took your eyes off your opponent and you got smacked in the gut again with the battle axe. And this one hurts a little bit. It is your turn. Kirsch is going to swing with the axe again. Okay. Yeah. Regular deck. Good. Just do that. Get no, no, submit. Come on. There we go. There we go. Okay. Does that connect? I have a twelve armor class. Hmm. Okay. So roll well for damage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Uh, ghost sound goes off. There is, however loud of a uh, explosion I can get, um, <laughs> I don't know because it's the spells weakened. Uh, to his right side, because he's swinging from Bert's left. Uh, kind of like I hear behind explosion. into his left. All right, so with the lessened, it would sound... You want explosions? Yes. Almost like someone, like, set off a fireball. Okay, so instead of hearing an explosion, it would sound like someone shoved his head under the sand while Ishtol was coming up from the, sa from, the sa from the sands. So it would still be loud, but not as loud as you wished it to be. You do realize I get a saving throw against that spell, right? Okay. It's a 16. I have a 10. <laughs> uh, Kirsch, does a 16 beat whatever level uh, ghost sound is for you? You resisted that. Yeah. All right. So, um, roll. Oh, you did. Oh, you did smack him. Okay. I did not see that. I'm sorry. So that puts him up to me. Yeah. All right. So, Bert, you get smacked. Where did you say you smacked him? On his left side. Bert, you see Kirish's axe coming at you, and you definitely get hit on your left shoulder with the front of the axe. And from a noise behind you, you hear what sounds like to be one of the dragons coming up from behind you through the sands. But you remember seeing them off to your right, behind Amora and Keith, sleeping. Kirish, go ahead and do your second attack. So... Because you had invisibility. Unleashes, yeah, he now unleashes invisibility, so he... gone. And... Uh... He's not completely gone. You, Bert, you see him oh, God, smack. Funny. You see him smack himself in the chest, 
And he doesn't fully disappear like last time. But you can kind of tell where Kirish is because every time he moves, either like a side shift or whatever, there's almost like an after image as he moves. Huh. Okay. Has he left himself open at all? <laughs> um. Okay. I was going to say, go ahead and finish uh, Kirish's movement. Oh, he's I mean, not invisible and he's going to try and move away from me? Uh, well, he can see me anyways, because funny enough, while I can make a light source invisible, I can't make the light itself invisible. Oh, God. <laughs> Bert, the only thing that's very clear is Kirish's runes. You just see solid light blue runes just floating around. Well, I know where to swing for. Well, okay. Yeah, the light itself. Great. You can yeah. see the light itself, not necessarily the runes. Oh, my apologies. Yeah. So yeah. just swing for fucking two foot below the damn light. You know, <laughs> right there. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Beautiful. Oh, God. I believe it was Dr. Dre said, keep their heads ringing. Ring, ding, dong. Yep, you're gonna get smacked. So, Kirish, you have the basic understanding. Do you two want to keep beating the shit out of each other, or are you guys good for the day? Man, I could, I could really use a nap. Just saying, I could really use a nap. Oh. <sighs> he, he just kind of like it stands right, up, like half visible. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, and so you're weird. not fooling anybody, dude. Like, I, I mean, let's just go to bed. It's it's been a long day. He just stands up, half visible, and looks over to Keith. Like, yeah, I'm I'm ready for sleep. Yes, please. You both did an excellent job. You both did. I'm very proud of you both. Let's go get. Let's go the hell to bed. <laughs> I can just see like Sounds the right. scene just like pans out looking at both Kirish and, and uh Bert. And they're just Bert like walking through the desert. <laughs> yeah. Why Kirish still half visible? <laughs> Fuck it. Keith starts to walk off and you see oh Amora gathering um gathering her supplies. And you see her struggle heavily trying to get up. Like, she actually try uses her wings to give herself enough oomph to stand. Go over there and try and help her out. If I can take her stupid armor off of her so she can walk without weight and being weighted down. Almost without a word, oh. she just hands you the chest piece, and this thing's heavy. Bert, I'll need you to roll the strength check to actually lift it. What? You need me to roll what? A strength, strength check? Strength check. 24? You weren't expecting this piece of armor to be so heavy. But you still managed to carry it off the ground. You need both hands, but you're able to carry off and it's just... If this is heavy now, and Amora is struggling to wear the rest of it, how strong was she actually before she got kidnapped? She holds the book close to her chest, and there's Lux wrapped around her neck. She kind of hobbles along. Um... Bert, would you have walking ahead of Amora? Would I what? Would you be walking ahead of Amora after you took the armor? Uh, or beside her to make sure she don't fall over, like. Okay. As you walk beside her, you notice that it's, you just see this huge shadow 
in front of you. And Kiris, you can actually see that her she actually has her wings out for balance, occasionally giving a soft flap so A, she doesn't hit Bert upside the head, but B, to help her keep balance. Kyrish, how fast can you run back to the uh, place where we need to rest at? Oh, dear God. It's only a quarter mile away. How fast can you run? You can run pretty <laughs> fast, yeah? Are we Wait. having to pick up a Mora? So... No, you have no, you have the summoning stone. I was going to say run back to the place, summon her there, she'll appear, and then you can just lay her down and she'll be fine and don't have to walk. No, I got a better idea. Because I can just use Tensor's floating disc, baby. Oh, okay. Well, then pick her Besides. up on Tensor's floating disc and then we'll go. Here is you walk over to Amora and you see her clutching the drawing supplies to her chest with one hand and she has her helmet under her other arm using her wings as balance. Well, that was actually really fun to watch. I greatly enjoyed that. Next time, let's just see you at 100% DS. Honestly, I was fine, and then Keith hit me that last time, and I was down for the count. Trust me, if I was at 100%, he'd be unconscious on the floor already. Yes, I will aware. She looks down. This is going to be an awkward question, but... Do you mind putting my armor in that bag of yours? Uh, sure. As you walk, she... It's like she's done this before. As you walk, she just strips out of her armor. And... Piece by piece, she hands you the armor, and it has a hefty weight. This isn't no shoddy-ass armor. This this has some weight to it. This is, from what you've compared, because you've held multiple dragon scales, you can tell this is dragon hide armor. There is very little getting through this thing. And her wings kind of collapse a bit, so they're not as wide. But you can tell that she's kind of like hobbling along. Almost like, you know, when you're, you, when you chafe, you kind of like try to walk normal, but it hurts to do so. You guys feel the cool desert air dissipate into normal warmth. As you've entered the bubble and the path opens up and you guys go down the stairs normally and Amora falls behind as she stick as she takes the stairs one at a time like a small child uh, let's see does she do a dumb god damn it she does do a dumb you start to hear the flapping of wings as she tries to catch up to you guys. And you hear a small thud to the building next to you. Do either of you look? A large thud? Yeah. Is it Amora falling down? Yeah. You both look over and you just see a crumpled Amora. You, you see her haggardly floating along, almost caught up to you guys. 
but she was focused on following you. She didn't see the half building, so you just see her basically body slam into the building and fall five feet from the air in a crumpled heap. Damn. She tries to get up and brush herself off and stand as dignified as she can. A little bit bruised. And she has her arm up against the building with a hand on her hip. Whoa. What took you so long, guys? I've been waiting here for like five minutes for you to get down here. Huh. I'm just so speechless. Like, I want to laugh so fucking bad, but I don't dare. She has a goofy grin on her face, trying to brush off that she just epically failed. I'm gonna take it in stride and be like, well, we can go inside and go get some rest now. Great. Actually, it's a really good idea Kirish came out with us, because if not, we'd be locked outside until someone inside woke up. Yeah. That would be awkward. Yes, indeed. She falls in stride in between the two of you and... Kirish, you feel... Amora's shoulder kind of touching the middle of your bicep. And then you feel another pressure as Lux goes back to her rightful spot. Well, that was a good ass beating. I quite enjoyed wa enjoyed watching you beating the hell out of Bud. I yeah, think it was what happened. Two sided there, not not really one sided. Duh. Yeah. It's I. Right. I mean, to be fair, I was going to kick her ass, but it's fine. I mean, yeah, well, better luck next time. But yeah, you took that hammer like a champ. I was actually quite impressed. I thought you were going to crumple, and then I remembered, oh wait, you're not Sage. You're a bit hardier than her. Also, when you get a chance, you gotta take that book from Amora. She's actually quite talented. Amora looks over. Lux, what are you saying? Are you tattling on me? I've been nothing but good to you. What do you mean like this, telling on me? How dare you? I thought we had something special. <laughs> Amora just kind of awkwardly waits at the door. Are you going to open it? Uh, no. You. Uh, me? I'm yes. Not... Uh, you know what? Come on. Let's go. He just opens the door in my room. <laughs> she looks very confused. And she heads in. Keith is already asleep on the floor. Still in his clothes. He's conked out. Riku has taken full cover of the couch. Despite being a little bit shorter than Bert, she has the entire couch. She's like fully stretched out like a cat. <clears throat> See? Ah. <sighs> That's what I want to do. I want to lay out and just crash. Right, well. I'll stay up. You two have a good rest. Alright. I'm gonna 
crawl back into my hole and actually try and get some sleep. I promise I won't be as loud. She sets her drawing supplies on the table. So is there anything else you need of me before I get into this? Go into those bedrooms, eh? Night! <laughs> sleep well. And the scene fades to Amara going back to her doodles. The entirety of Gondra finally getting a well-deserved snooze. And the scene pans out to where... Back to Death's Hall. Where Nisana is on patrol and happens to see Eni. Eni gives a friendly wave, to which Nisana does not take too kindly. Walks up to her and punches her straight in the face. What in the bloody fuck was that? I don't know what you mean. I, I thought you were enslaved. I thought you were forced to come here. No, you come here willingly? Then it's everything we fought for. And you pull this shit. Well, maybe if your sister wasn't such a floozy. Another punch. You call my sister a floozy again, and I'll make sure that you won't be able to speak at all. I will rip your tongue from your mouth with my bare hands and then shove it down your throat so you s choke on it. Or maybe I'll just rip your voice box from your throat. Wow, so violent. Let's see where Rhea gets it from. You've made an enemy. I really hope you know that. Don't expect anything from me. Well, if I just go tell Bone Daddy that uh, you're not listening to my command, we're going to have issues. Remember, you're under my control. I'm above you. I about to know woman, man, creature, dead or alive. I will fight until the very end. If and if I have to fight you, I'll be more than happy to do so. That's what you think. And her chest starts to glow black. Now. Be a good little bitch and continue on your patrol. Isana's arm also grows black. And her eyes flash black as well. She releases, releases any and goes back on her patrol. And he walks away with a smug look on her face. What were your guys' favorite part of this little mini-sode? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm loving the fact that we sparred. That was kind of cool. Actually, it was really cool. We get to beat up on each other a little bit. Um... Yeah, I need to do some things. And, like, I don't know. I, there's, there's just like a lot of twists that are gonna end up happening here pretty soon. I think. I can just feel it. And uh, yeah, the, the the things with teeth and the training, that whole thing was pretty cool. I'm glad you enjoyed it. What I about knowing? I love knowing what feat I'm going to be uh, taking next level. <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah. 
I love knowing I have a bottle of good rum. Oh, that's right. I gotta add that in. <laughs> bottle Try of good rum. Oh, yeah. No kidding. That is the best rum. By the way, are you putting uh, that, uh, that, uh, are you spiking your coffee? Yeah. Oh, you know I'm gonna spike something. Like, <laughs> she's, yeah. Yeah, Sage is getting spiked. Rhea's getting spiked. Oh, I don't think Rhea will turn it down. I don't think any of the party will turn it down other than Sage. Okay, then well, we're just going to have to, well, you know how we turned mud into dirt or whatever it was? Mm -hmm. we, tra we did the trap. The shame hole. We might just have to do that again. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. But I think my favorite part was just the bullshittery of the extent of Dusk Blades. Like, I haven't thought about half of the things until T Dab DM'd me about it. And I'm like, oh my god, I yeah. could be using Keith so much better. Yes. I, I'm That's really. I'm really going to lean hard into the invisibility on the shield there. I think that's going to be really cool. Oh, yeah. It fits your character so well as perfectly. Like with the whole sabotaging thing. It's got to do something about the glowy, glowy bits. Mm hmm. See, you need another hood. That's why I can't wait for my next oh, level. God, I can't. Uh, I got to get Barbarian. It is going to be crazy. Oh, yeah. But that is all for a later date. Thank you all so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this little mini-sode. If you did, leave a like down below and comment on what your favorite part was. Don't forget to scratch that subscribe button and pick the bell so you know when the next, se um, next session comes out. We all hope you're having a good one, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye! Later! Later. Quee! DMABO out. Good lord.